truth comes out He used to know Where did that go? Flat head in a wide jar Lives by no law I started playing the guitar when I was 12 or 13 years old and the lessons were sparse and few and far between. I didn't sing much for people or, or play much. Um, and then right about when I got to college I just sort of said, you know, screw it, I'm like it's time to play, it's time to start, you know, performing your music. And a woman named Summer, um, a fellow musician and her, uh, her indie record label that she was a part of decided to uh, pay for me to record. Um, for the first time, a small EP, and that was sort of the start of everything in Portland. I got a chance to record my music, and um, you know, from there I could start booking shows and everything. And then I just sort of decided that you know, music was the thing that I wanted to do. You know, that, that was going to be the focus. Here, it's already. Yours. I enjoy working with Sam Wegman a great deal. We've, we have it off and, and uh, we have a good rapport. He decided to come into the studio and do a little work with me and see if our creative energies would you know, meld together and it was good. So we've been collaborating and so far we've, we've put together two songs and um, it's been a lot of fun. He's relatively new to the studio process but he has a lot of really concrete ideas about music and uh, He's a really sophisticated young guy and it's a lot of fun working with him. I'm just coming off recording an EP with Sam D and that's been like super eye-opening experience um, and definitely just a blast because I didn't know I could make music that sounded like that until I met him. He just sort of takes it to the next level so for the first time in a long time I'm really excited about you know the music I've recently recorded. He can really play the guitar. He may not be as astute in terms of every last detail of the music theory, but that's really not the most important thing about rock music, is it? You know, you know he really kept me honest on a lot of things that <laughs> maybe others didn't keep me honest on before, or um, places that I needed to improve, which, uh, which is important to look at. I think maybe there's like a fill to clean up and then that one, uh, that little guitar spot. Mm -hmm. I think it's right. Uh there was one like da 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 da. Okay. What is that? That's just a crappy note on the guitar. Oh. <laughs> you just hit a loud note or something. No need. It's actually. No need. It's just a little rattly. That's okay. Here it comes. When the rate at which we're falling is a million miles from slow. Yeah. I bet you can hit that with your national voice. Yo. Here, here. Yeah, that sounds good. Like that. Do it like that. Okay. When the rate at which we're falling is a million miles from slow.
Cool. It's just a little tiny bit flat. Okay. Here it comes. Will you sing it again? Um, you, you got the right note. Okay. Here. Yeah, you just gotta tune it up a little. Okay. When the rate at which we're falling is a million miles from slow. And being able to do it with just the two of us in the studio was, you know, quite the experience. And then come out with a track um, behind closed doors that really, um, I think, sort of embodies a lot of the sound that I want to get across. Our entire project in the class is to develop a venture that uh, will perpetuate, you know, whatever our passion is. And so in this case, you know, it's songwriting and it's performing. There's this program that allows you to travel and create an you know, entrepreneurial venture. You identify either a problem or you know, a unique opportunity. And in this case, for me, it's the fact that uh, people just aren't buying as many records anymore. And if you want to be a musician for a career, then you need to make adjustments for that. So you know, it's just about identifying an opportunity. And the class has been really nice for that. You know. We went to New York and I had an opportunity to meet with uh, some major labels like Sony, for example, and some smaller ones as well, um, like Mascot Records and stuff. And it gave me a really like, wide perspective on you know, the role of record labels in independent musicians' life and you know, how necessary they really are. And at what point you decide to say, you know, do I try and get signed? Do I try and do this completely by myself? I was reading the Wall Street Journal the other day, um, and uh, I think it was last week or the week before was uh, the Billboard Top 100's worst release on a record um, ever. And no offense to Cake, Cake's a cool band, um, <laughs> but they'd sold you know 44,000 albums. Now, if you look back eight years ago, a hip hop group like Outkast, they debut on Billboard and. They say sell three and a half million records. You know that's saying something. Something's going on. So recognizing that, you know, the music industry in some ways is suffering. You got to take the lumps and bruises, and you got to find a way around it. And um, if it's what you really want to do, it's definitely impossible. You just have to do it in a new way, um, because the old way isn't working anymore. So this is about saying maybe we don't need a record label. Our record label is the internet. That's our distributor. You know, being in this program sort of gave me a different perspective on like, you know, how to market my music. Um, and I mean, I guess I can't really tell if it's hit or miss yet. I got to thank Blues on that end. You know, Blues Brews is it's a pretty sweet place. But I do know that. And more people go now than they did before, you know, and like in like a five show span or something, it's grown each time. Um, and I, I don't know, I'm either getting lucky or I'm like doing the right amount of marketing, but I, you know, all I know is like I got a long way to go. And sort of what I've done is like approached it as a multiple part series. Um, and then at the same time, I got to like find other artists to hop on the bill with me that are going to bring in different crowds, but not so different that they won't mesh. Um, and then, and then you really get something going, you know, because people remember that and they have something to take away. And that's really what you want to do is you want to you want to give them something that they're going to remember. After a certain point, it's not even about me anymore. It's just about the community that happens, you know, and about, you know, people having fun. And I'm just glad that I can, you know, be there providing some entertainment and hopefully get some connections going. As long as that grows, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much a happy camper. Sam. Hey, it's good to 
see you all. I think that's just really key also is maintaining like and developing some kind of, you know, relationship with the people you're playing music to. Let's see. I'm sort of doing my set that I normally do, but like a little bit backwards. Oh, I'm going up front. Hey guys. <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, you're out there to like make people feel something. Um, and that's really the only way you're going to achieve your goals and that in defining your expectations. You gotta lay that out in front of you or else you'll never be real with yourself. It's nice to meet you. This is a protest song. Exec pay to sweatshop wage We're starving for the truth Don't open your eyes You'll get a surprise So hail to the corporate king Illuminate my life so I can Promise for a promise is a paper receipt And I won't be another martyr in the interest-bearing slaughter 